Okay, I've decided to start a new series on my YouTube channel, uh, specifically dedicated to showing people how to draw and paint tree forms. It's something that I've been constantly fascinated and keep going back to within my own artwork. It just tends to be some of the kind of shapes that really appeal to me and they keep cropping up in all my paintings, whether they're fantasy or surreal paintings or whether they're more traditional kind of realistic landscapes. So far in my landscapes, I've done quite silhouetted trees. So they're predominantly within a landscape with the, the light generally coming from behind the tree. So they're, they're pretty much silhouetted. So you don't see much shading or structure other than the actual silhouette of it. So like I say, I thought I'd do a series and I'll be able to show you how to do different tree types, how to do different paintings and drawing styles. Yeah, and see where we go from there. So I thought I'd start with something relatively straightforward today. Um, I'm not going to do a painting on this tutorial, it's going to be all about drawing and the type of tree that I thought I would choose is an oak tree. It's something that and the oak tree appears in England quite commonly and it's something that, that really inspires a lot of the kind of shapes and forms that appear within my artwork too. So in terms of the settings that I'm going to use within Procreate app, I've got an A4 canvas, it's just the default settings and then on the brush I'm going to choose a HB pencil. It's on the maximum size and I've not quite got it on the full opacity, somewhere sort of halfway. Now obviously the pencil pressure itself, if you press on hard, you're going to get a pretty dark mark, but for the majority of it, you don't need to press on fully. Now I'm going to use a few layers on this, so it is going to be appropriate to digital art. However, you can take some of these basic points and skills and apply them to pencil and paper just as easily. So these are these are tips for general drawing. It just so happens that I'm using an iPad Pro, but you could use these in any medium. So my first layer, I'm going to really just try and concentrate on the actual form itself. So generally speaking with a an oak tree, you might get something that is quite rounded, almost like a mushroom shape. Now it doesn't need to be perfect, it can be quite irregular. Obviously trees are not going to be, unless they've been deliberately shaped by humans that way, they're not going to be specifically round. Now this is going to be on layer one. If you're doing this on pencil and paper, you might just wish to do this very faint. I'm doing it slightly darker on camera so that you can see it. But like I say, if you're doing it with traditional materials, you probably do this a little bit lighter so that you can easily erase this and it won't be visible at the end of the drawing but some kind of rounded kind of mushroom shape. I'm going to set the ground somewhere in this region. So very roughly placing these in. And then I'm gonna have some suggestion of a, a trunk that sort of branches off at the bottom. Quite irregular, but it kind of fans out like this. So it's very much like a, I guess it's a little bit like a mushroom or a mushroom cloud, some kind of explosion like so. I'm not going to be too, you know, fine tuning this at this point. This is gonna be something that evolves through the layers. So for another layer now, we're going to try and break this form into smaller components. So best way of describing this is a series of blobs. So you might get some large shapes like this, and you might get some smaller ones that fit in and squeeze in next to it. You might have some that stick out more than others. You might have some smaller ones, some really kind of weird shapes up here that stick out. Do a couple of larger ones with smaller ones, satellite ones that kind of grow out from those. Again, I'm not being too precious about this. I'm just creating a selection of, of shapes really at this point. I'm gonna leave some gaps because if we do it too crowded, then there's gonna be no way of seeing, three, seeing through and you might not be able to create opportunities for branches and other forms to be seen in the mix as well. Okay, um, that will do initially. What we're gonna do once you've done that is I'm gonna create another layer. The two layers that are underneath, I'm going to completely get rid of at a later point. They're just there literally as guides. So on this top layer now, we're going to start adding some more texture. Now this is going to be a drawing that creates the illusion from a distance, but as soon as we start, start zooming into some of these textural elements, you'll see that they break down. But that's the nature of drawing because drawing is not taking a photograph, it's not capturing every single leaf and every single detail in absolute accuracy. It's about creating an illusion so at a glance, you'll get the effect without having to draw every single leaf and every single branch. If that was your mission, then good luck to you. But I don't have time to do that and most artists don't. And in fact, the really good artists, really good painters are really skilled at finding shortcuts to creating this kind of effect without having to draw every single detail. 
So experience gives you the ability to find quicker, more efficient ways of achieving these effects. So I'm going to start somewhere near the top and then I'll move to somewhere near the bottom and I'll show you the difference between the two. We have to think when we're doing this in terms of the light source. Now, generally speaking, we're in the daytime on the scene, so the light is gonna be coming somewhere from above. So let's just say, we'll leave that arrow on there for now. So imagine the light coming from up there. It's in the middle of the day, so as you can imagine, the top of the tree is going to be darker, uh, lighter rather, than the bottom of the tree. And anything that overhangs is a, a hidden element is going to be more in shadow as well. So if I take one of these blobs, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm not going to do this very much. It just gives you a chance then to add a little bit more. Now what I'm going to start doing at this point is adding lots and lots of separate dashes. Now I'll just zoom in to explain this. So if you wanted to, you could turn the size of the brush down and you can really see perhaps more of a squiggle, but I'm turning the size of the brush up a little bit and therefore the, the squiggles are going to be less apparent. But either way, I'm creating manually, so rather than relying on a specific brush for this effect, because this is trying to show you the, the ability to do this with traditional means. So if you were using pencil and paper, then you could do this just as easily as if you were doing this digitally. So we're going to have a series of separate dashes and squiggles that when they are all joined up together within this blob, they are going to help create an illusion of leaf textures. So I'm just gonna fill it to begin with, but then I'm going to start concentrating more of them. So you're gonna get a, a greater cluster of them towards the bottom half of this. So quite simply think of it as a, a blob shape. So if you were doing the shading, you would have an area in the bottom of that kind of potato-like shape that's gonna be in the shadow because you're gonna have light coming from the top. So we're going to create something similar with these particular shapes. Now you don't have to worry about sticking neatly within the lines. They are just a guide, remember. Give you a, a general sense of where to place things, but do not stick to them too rigidly, otherwise you'll, you'll not create an organic look to the piece. You might find that if you reach an area where you want to make the whole section of it a little bit darker, you could just simply go over that whole area. Rather than doing just all these and you have to do hundreds and hundreds of them, Sometimes if you know you want to create a whole area like this where it's going to be shadowed, you can just go over the top of that texture. So the two things combine. So you can have this effect combined with these textural elements and the two can blend together pretty effectively there. Okay, so I'm going to move on to a, another area, one of the other blobs. Remember, this is all in a separate layer. So when it comes to it, I'm going to delete the layers underneath and all you'll be left with is the layer on top. But these are very, very useful guides. Just gives you the confidence to know that you're kind of heading in the right direction. So it's okay to leave certain areas where you're not really going to add any tone or texture. You can leave blank areas and that's absolutely fine. Or you can press on much more lightly. You can still do the effects, but you create a much lighter effect by pressing on lightly, obviously. Again, don't worry about the edges of these shapes. I'm gonna go over these, create an area where they join together a little bit more effectively. Remember this shape here? So although trees obviously are made up of branches and leaves, you will definitely create or start to see the illusion that all those textural elements clump together and make something more dense and more 3D, certainly from a distance. Obviously, the closer you get in reality, you're going to start seeing branches and individual leaves. But this is not about recreating reality. This is creating the illusion of reality. But that illusion will break down in all drawings the more you zoom in. So I'm going to do move across various of these blobs and we'll come back once I've done a few more. Now, drawing is quite a time-consuming process, although I'm not drawing individual leaves, even just creating shortcuts like this of textural elements that replicate the effect is still gonna be time-consuming. So I think with most drawing, you just have to settle in for the process, put the time in, and you're gonna get the, the benefits of the time that you put in. To be honest, I enjoy doing this kind of thing. I think I gravitated towards drawing because I find it quite a meditative process and I actually joy, enjoy the time required to put into it. I think a lot of the time, 
people who listen to my videos think I'm bored or depressed in the tone of my voice, but in truth, it's just because I'm so relaxed and get into that meditative state that it kind of flattens out my, uh, my tone, just because I'm so relaxed with it, really. But I promise you, I'm very happy drawing. It's one of the things that I really love doing. Um, and I don't mind putting the time into pieces like this because I think that the, uh, the end result shows the effort put in. So even within the darker areas here where you get lots of it clumped together, it is important to leave even there some areas perhaps where you don't add tone because there's always going to be some leaves that stick out even from the shaded areas and create lighter contrast. So it's important not to completely close. If you completely close down all the areas, then you're going to achieve less of the effect of variety. So leave some bits that even in the darkest areas have some highlights too. And please remember to leave gaps between the blobs. That's going to be an important feature as you'll see a little later on. As we get down towards these lower blobs, compared to the, the ones higher up, these are going to be more consistently darker. So when I'm doing these squiggles, I can pretty much start from a dark point of view, even at the top. So I'm pressing on a little bit harder for these textural elements right from the start. But that isn't to say it won't get darker at the bottom. It can still get even darker as it goes towards the bottom. So you're still getting a contrast between the top area and the bottom area. Again, just to remind you, this doesn't look good close up. It's about the overall effects that we're, we're really going for. So you can probably see I'm doing larger sec sections here that all join up because what tends to happen with darker tones is it tends to consolidate things together. You will get more areas that seem to join compared to the more fragmented appearance of things that are more highlighted. Again, these round blob shapes are only a general guide. Don't stick too neatly within the, the confines of the lines. Have your texture breaking out from the edges. You need those random elements that just stick out as well. So don't allow them to become a too rigid a guide. They're only there for general guidance, but not for sticking too, uh, too strictly. So at the edge of the tree, I'm just creating a few impressions of texture. Again, no clear outlines to the blobs, just some shapes that seem to cluster around the edge, perhaps having them quite light around the edge as well, so they kind of disappear. Because you're not going to get heavy concentrations of leaves right at the edge, you're going to get some that just sort of disappear into nothing, almost kind of fading out in like shading terms. We may have the uh, may have the odd branch that sticks out at a later point, but we're not quite doing the branches yet. We're just creating texture, so we'll come back to that element. This is time consuming, like I said. This tutorial of this process is looking like something that is too laborious for you. Then I suggest you go find something that you enjoy a little bit more because drawing does take time. It is a laborious process if you want to really achieve anything. So. I think whatever it is you want to become good at, you just have to be prepared to put in the hours. There's no escaping it. So now I'm getting sort of part way through. If I just remove one of the layers, you can start to see the effect that it leaves behind. I'm not going to get rid of it at this point. I'm going to perhaps subdue it. So if I go into the levels here, I can turn the opacity down so I can still see them, but they're not going to dominate as much as they were. So I'm going to go back to that layer again. Continue to add some of these textural elements in there. So 
Now, specifically to this uh, series that I'm creating uh, dedicated to trees, if there's any particular type of tree or variety of tree that you'd like to see a drawing tutorial on, please leave me those suggestions down in the comments, whether that be just variety of trees or different lighting conditions, different sort of seasonal changes, then let me know the kind of things that you'd be interested in seeing and I will try to get around to doing as many of them as I possibly can over the, the course of this series as we go. I've done a lot of landscapes so far and obviously I'm going to continue to do landscapes but I need to just try and make sure that I'm adding a little bit of variety to what I'm able to offer on my channel, partly just to stave off boredom for myself but obviously to keep the channel interesting for everybody else too. And don't get me wrong, I could do landscapes all day long every day. I do enjoy the process, but to a certain extent with these kind of things, once you've watched say a dozen landscape tutorials, you kind of get the essence of, of how a particular artist uh, would actually go about constructing these kind of things. And you may well still find them entertaining or interesting to watch, but there comes a point in which you, you start to get the idea in terms of a lesson how they're actually constructed so I need to constantly keep um, adding more variety to the channel more things that people might want to learn about so if you have suggestions about anything to be honest you can put those down in the comments they're always gratefully received I do tend to favor natural things so whether that be natural landscapes or natural things like trees or elemental kind of forces I do prefer that rather than cityscapes or anything too man-made but that's not to say I will never do those things it's just it tends to be more of my interest to do more nature. Good thing about YouTube is whatever you're looking for you're going to find somebody that offers that up as well so I don't feel too much pressure to do everything I just think to do something or some things well or as well as you can I think sometimes is, is a worthwhile approach and let other people who are really interested and perhaps more experienced in doing cityscapes, for example, lead the way on that front. I apologise if that's what you're looking for. Sometimes it's frustrating if you, you like an artist or a teacher's approach and you want them to do very specific things because that's what you're struggling with at the moment. I do understand that, I do appreciate that, but there's no point me offering myself up as an expert or the best teacher out there for everything when, in actual fact, I have my specialisms, the things that I'm probably more experienced in than others. So. so again, when we get to these edges, you can have clusters of, of uh, leaves and other elements that break out from the edge. They're not contained neatly. You'll find that they don't they don't apply themselves neatly around the edges of any kind of tree. So have them breaking out from the edges of your invented blobs. So again, as we get to this lower part, we're going to have some darker tones down here we can really start to concentrate all these dark squiggles together a little bit more so that even the breakaway forms at the bottom are really dark because they're going to be in shadow. The more that they're underneath this kind of general 3D shape, they're going to be completely shaded in some areas. So you're really going to see a dark blob. So again, like I was showing before, underneath the, the textures, you can have some flatter tones as well just to really help darken up some areas not all of it because you might want some bits like here for example that continue to have some light tones so I might leave this bit with some elements that stick out but I can generally subdue some areas and add some darker tones to features around it So at this point I'm going to get rid of some of the, the guide shapes, the, the individual blobs. We can still kind of see them now because we've created the, the sense of shading light I demonstrated here. You can see a blob kind of shape here. You might see another one there, another one up there. So they're still there, they're still visible, but to get rid of the actual lines of them now really helps see what you've got and maybe sees perhaps where 
you need to make them a little bit clearer in terms of the tones that you're using. I think sometimes having the outline itself can distract you from what you've actually got in terms of uh, texture and, and tone. So once the outlines are gone, you can really see what you've, what you've created in those other aspects. So again, I've got quite an open section here, but I'm going to just start placing in some leaf textures anyway. So there's not going to be a blob here, but it doesn't mean that I'm not going to have any foliage. So I'll just start placing in some random ones that don't necessarily arrange themselves in that kind of form, but there's still going to be some texture there. So It is important there are some gaps, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those gaps in a moment. In fact, let's start to think about that now. So I'm going to create another layer. And on this layer, I'm really going to concentrate on some of the branches that might appear through the piece. So I'm going to begin by adding some tone in for the actual trunk, really. So I can go back to this and start adding some real texture into there. But I just want to start building in some of the dark tones to the, the branches that are coming in here. So I'm going to have it as a big wide trunk, but it's going to split off into various different quite thick branches. So almost all of this section is going to be in shade and you're going to see bits of it continuing to go up and inside the tree there as well, and maybe branch off into extra bits. So it's important to leave gaps through your image so that you can really get a sense of some of the tree elements. So come down to the bottom start to just roughly shade some of these in just to create the tone. I can go back and add texture to it at a later point, but I just want to really start to break it down into its components. So maybe a large section that comes over here. Let's just shade it in quickly. Another section that comes up here. Maybe it splits into two. One that goes that way and one that goes that way. With tree branches, it's very important that you continuously, when it branches off, when it splits off, that they continue to get thinner and thinner as they go along. Um, it's a very common mistake that people, when they're drawing trees, tend to do the, the branches going thin, and then they might go thick again, and then they might, they just do all sorts of random things, really, to go thin and thick. And they really shouldn't do that. They should always start off at one level of thickness, and then if they branch off, they will go a degree thinner from the thing that they've grown off from. So again, all this tree is going to be in shade. It's deep within the canopy or the, the area, the textures. There's going to be lots of leaves and foliage, which means that there's not much sunlight gets through to the actual trunk. So we can pretty much make that a silhouette. It's not going to be totally black, but compared to other elements, it's going to be pretty dark. Um, so we don't need to worry too much anything other than just mapping in the lines of it and just shading it in quite roughly really. You can always go back into it and add a little bit more actual bark texture I suppose but for now I'm just going to keep it relatively rough and like I say it was important that we left some gaps in there because that allows us to see some of the branches as they sort of progress through the tree itself. So again we've got a gap here there's nothing wrong with having a couple of branches emerging in that area look for other look for other gaps in your tree let's add some more branch elements in there maybe a section in here maybe a couple of branches that stick out quite high up remember at the very top of the tree they're only going to be little spindly branches they're not going to be any of the thicker forms and almost really you're probably not going to get any branches that stick out it's the middle of probably summer in this piece so there's a lot of of leaves they're going to grow at every single opportunity, so you're not going to get many branches that emerge without leaves on them. We can probably get rid of the initial layer now. So the only thing we've got now are these top two layers, one for the branches, one for the leaves. At this point, they might get a little bit mixed up. It doesn't really matter. I'm working on the next layer up. So I'm going to combine sort of texture 
and shade at this point, but also there's going to be elements of textural things, foliage that is going to be much further back. So at the moment, really what we've concentrated on is the stuff that's going to be on this side of the tree. Now, obviously there's going to be um, lots of leaves that go on the reverse side of the tree and the chances are you're going to see them as you look through the gaps. But the reason that though the way that they're going to look different is that they're not going to have, have any of the highlights. The light will be hitting them perhaps, but it will be the whole of the highlights will be visible if you walk around the other side of the tree. So when we do get areas of foliage, the only thing you're going to really get is a, a flatter sense of dark texture. Now the way that I'm going to represent this is to shade it in, but I'm generally going to do it a lighter tone. So if I demonstrate it first of all, in fact, I'm going to do it on a separate layer just to really try and concentrate on that. So I'm going to do a lighter tone. So we're going to clump together much more concisely. I'm going to try and keep it a very consistent tone. It will still have gaps in it, but I'm trying to keep it more smoothly shaded without the so many of the textural elements to it. So it's going to hopefully create the sense that there's different levels of texture. There's going to be the texture at the forefront that has more white highlights that pick up the sunlight. And then there's going to be all the foliage that goes into the far distance as well. So it's about now about looking for opportunities to show flatter tones that might be in the distance. It's going to be quite a subtle element, this really. I'm hoping that you'll be able to understand and see the effect of that. So for example, in this area, there might be some leaves that are further away. So we're going to do them lighter to help push them back compared to these ones. These ones are gonna be a lot lighter and they're not gonna be as fragmented. You're not gonna see the variety of tone. We're gonna to keep it kind of middle gray and it's all going to pretty much condense to a flatter effect. So anywhere where there might be gaps and you can see right through to the other side of the tree, you can add some of these flatter tones and then it's going to contrast here compared to here. So there's a different effect. And again, you can really help concentrate that effect by adding a bit more texture into this element too. So there's going to be a flatter area here compared to this. If you really wanted to exaggerate that feature, you could go back onto this layer, use your eraser, if you wanted to perhaps get rid of some of the textures you might have added. There's nothing to stop you going back in, go back up to that layer and just really make more of a feature of those elements that are gonna be through the other side of the tree. So just to demonstrate that effect again, I'm going to show it extra clear here. So you might have an element that you can see through the other side of the tree that creates some middle sort of gray textures like this. They might still have some gaps in it, for example, but it's gonna contrast very much to more foreground textures that are gonna be a concentration of darker elements and lighter gaps too. Or lighter leaves hitting the light, or light hitting the leaves rather. So there's two different types of texture. This is gonna be the distant one. This is gonna be more of the foreground one. So we'll just get rid of those. I'm gonna get rid of those as well because they are beginning to annoy me a little bit. Where are they? They're there. So whenever we get a flat tone like this, the way of really just starting to help understand that is to perhaps do some of the, the branches showing through in the middle of the tree as well. So if you can see through enough to see the branches, you're probably going to see some of the, the foliage on the other side of the tree as well. So the two elements kind of join together there a little bit. So again, you've got a flat area of tone there because that's deeper into the tree. So you're more likely to see some of the branches in that element as well. Uh, we need to start adding some other elements too. Not to say I've finished with those completely, but we still need to start moving on to other aspects just to 100% sort of or give a greater sense of illusion. We need some kind of ground where it sits, where it grows from. Now, obviously the light's coming from above, you're gonna get darker areas here, so it is probably going to cast a shadow on the ground as well. So we can have perhaps more textural elements that rise up to meet the tree. Remember, there's gonna be roots underneath the ground, so 
you're generally going to get a, a raising like a curve this that goes up to meet the tree and then a falling away as you go sort of further along this way and we're going to have sort of shadow as well. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to start to try and get some of these elements. So now you have to be careful because if you go into too much detail on an element like this and it warrants zooming in to look at that level of detail, then you're also going to notice the fact that other elements are not going to be that realistic. So it's trying to find the balance. You don't want to overdo the detail on one area if it's then going to reveal the lack of detail on another neighboring area. So we can work into it a little bit maybe exaggerating some of these lines that come down that separate the different elements of the tree. Maybe some little bits that stick out on the actual tree itself. But if you're trying to create a consistent kind of finish for the thing, you don't want to overdo any one area. Don't make it too detailed. Remember, it's a, a rounded form. So if you've got a trunk, you might need to do sense that it's obviously shaded on the edges. Maybe go into some of these branches that go off on the inside, maybe shut down some of the gaps on them so that they appear more solid. I'm not saying completely black, you don't want that, perhaps you just want to subdue them somewhat but you don't want to get rid of all the little sort of patchy areas. So press on lightly but give it a consistent appearance maybe. So now it's just a question of adding little details. Like I say if there's any gaps like this you're going to see more of the branches. Anywhere where the, it looks strange like this there's not a lot going on. Maybe what that needs is more of the texture just to fill in that area. Maybe this is really densely packed with leaves. Create some rougher parts around the edge. Maybe you'll notice one or two branches coming down here, low hanging sort of branches with some more just elements like that. In fact, I don't like that. I'm not copying from anything specifically, so you just have to sort of find your way with a little bit, see what you like, see what you don't. But again, they're going to be generally darker in this bottom region. They're not going to get as much light unless they're distant they're going to be fairly dark. So we could close down this edge, this whole area in fact a little bit more. Maybe exaggerate the point a little bit more. See this doesn't look quite right, it looks too empty. So maybe we could have some of these distant elements to it, we could have some flat tones represent some slightly more background elements. Because we can see the branch so therefore we might see the, the foliage in the background too. So bear in mind, you're probably going to see patches of, of light coming right the way through as well. If you don't have any of these elements in the tree, it's going to look pretty dull. It's going to look like a one big blob shape. So you do need some sunlight possibly breaking through. So it's okay to have completely white areas and that will, that will generally help sell the illusion too. If you feel that you've not got enough, you can go back over some of your areas and just really maybe make more of those features in areas too. And just to really help people understand that it's supposed to be a gap, you can shade the surrounding areas so you create a slightly greater contrast of that too. Okay, I think we're pretty much done here. Just gonna do a last sort of pass of a little bit of shading here and there just to maybe bring out some of those blobs again a little bit cl more clearly. But I hope this has been a useful tutorial. If you've enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Press the bell notification, that way you'll be notified whenever there's my uh, latest upload. If you want access to some of my colour codes for my painting tutorials, um, and you want to generally support me, you can do so over my Patreon page. 
There is a link for that down in the description. I've also created a second channel that is a bit more of a collaborative project and it's a chance for my subscribers to get involved, work into some of my drawings and actually get their, their efforts showcased on the channel over there as well. So there's a link down for that in the description too. So I'm going to leave that for there at this time. If you want to give me suggestions on other tutorials, please leave that down in the description. I will read all the comments. I try to reply to the vast majority of them, if not all of them. Um, so please make sure to get involved in whatever form that you want to, and I shall catch you back here again. Thanks for watching. See you later.